This is Keys to the Shop, episode 237, Thoughts on Post-COVID Coffee. Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Keys to the Shop, where we give you insights, inspiration, and the tools you need to grow as a coffee service professional. My name is Christy Furio. I'm your host for the show. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen today. I would encourage you to subscribe to this show and also leave a rating or review if you would. Um, And also, you know, if you share this show with a friend, I will be forever in your debt. If you're an owner or a manager, uh, somebody who has a team of people, there's a lot of content in this show that I think would be really helpful for the development of of your baristas and, for uh, of course, for you as a leader and a manager. So um, that would be amazing. Now, I want to remind you that Keys to the Shop is available for consulting and coaching, whether that's over the phone or in person. There's lots of different ways that we can work together to help you improve your operations, your quality, and uh, just take things to the next level in your coffee journey, whether you're just starting out or you've been in the business for a little bit. Um, I would love to talk to you to see what that might look like for uh, your your context. And all you have to do is email me, chris at keys to the shop dot com, and we can set up a time to just chat and see what that might look like. Again, that email, chris at keys to the shop dot com. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Prima Coffee. Prima Coffee is one of the world's best specialty coffee equipment suppliers because they curate the best equipment from all over the world and match it perfectly with the needs of their customers. If you're looking to open a new cafe or open a second cafe or just upgrade the equipment that you've got right now, Prima Coffee is an amazing partner to work with in helping you get the right gear. When you go to their website over at prima-coffee.com, you'll see what I mean. Their selection is amazing. And also their resources on their website are amazing as well. They put a lot of work into creating free resources to help you brew better coffee, make latte art, use the equipment well. Uh, They're all about setting you up for success in your specialty coffee endeavors. That's why I love working with them, and I recommend that you work with them as well. A really great company and group of people to work with uh, when you're looking for the best equipment and service to go along with that over at prima-coffee.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by the world's leader in plant-based performance beverages. That, of course, is Pacific Foods in their Pacific Barista Series. The Barista Series has taken the world by storm because the name performance beverage is not just a name. It's actually what it does. It performs excellently on your bar. They develop their range of products, whether that's almond, soy, coconut, rice, hemp, oat, uh, with a lot of feedback from the barista community. They want to design these so that the people using it on the bar are excited to use it and your customers are excited to drink it. You know, I think if you're looking for the best in plant-based options on your menu, then the Barista Series is the perfect fit for you. So if you would go to their website over at pacificfoodservice.com and explore the options, get these in your stores, taste them for yourself, you'll see what I mean. It's really an amazing product, fantastic company, and it shows in each and every cup. So again, visit them at their website, pacificfoodservice.com. And when you think about plant-based beverages, think the Barista Series from Pacific. Okay, so today I wanted to present to you a presentation that I did for the SCA on their Instagram Live back in March when the COVID thing was really just hitting its stride. Actually, it was in April that I did this, but I wanted to present this as a podcast to all of you because I think a lot of the things that we talked about in this presentation are very relevant even today. You know, it's about five months now since COVID first came on the scene, Uh, not even half a year, but it feels like it's been a year and the emotional toll that this has taken on all of us in the retail industry and the world is enormous. And we're still trying to find out what the new normal is. What's it going to look like to uh, be in coffee a year from now? And are there signs of what that's like right now? What should we be do- doing to prepare ourselves? And there's lots of different COVID-focused um, episodes that I put out during uh, especially the peak of the covid a crisis when it was first happening. I would encourage you to go back and listen to those. And um, this presentation is kind of a idea of different areas 
of our businesses that we can expect to change and uh, I think have proven that they are starting to change in these directions as a result of COVID. So what we're going to talk about today is the mindset that we should have in this time. We're also going to talk about opportunities that we have in our leadership, in our business, and with our staff, and what the future is going to look like. And even though this was shared in April, I think over the past uh, five months, this has really proven itself to be true, and we're just going to see more of this stuff. And so I hope that this is an encouraging thing for you, and it gives you some ideas on how to direct your business and yourself during this time that we're, we're still right in the middle of, right? The first thing that we need to focus on, we don't want to revert back to the old ways. Uh, we don't want to try to find a new normal. We want to try to find a better normal. We want to use this as an opportunity to better ourselves, to create a more streamlined version of our businesses, and look at this as an opportunity for betterment. And sometimes that's going to be difficult, but there are a lot of uh, soul-searching moments that this time has forced us to have, and it really puts us in touch with the deeper why behind our business. And when we get in touch with that, it would be great for us to stay in touch with that and make sure that we don't get um, carried away the way we might have before, where the business's momentum carries us into a direction that maybe we didn't want it to go into. We kind of have an opportunity to start over in some respects. Um, maybe some of you have more opportunity than others to do that, but regardless, um, viewing this as an opportunity is a positive way to view a hard situation. And when you have a positive attitude towards something, even when it's difficult, you can be more creative. It's not about denying that it's hard. It's about trying to maximize the amount of positive things you can, you can get from it by being positive yourself. You can't really be very creative when you're in despair uh, and when you're angry. But when you're looking at things from a, a, a optimistic point of view, creativity uh, gets higher, and you can come up with more uh, reasons and more opportunities to survive and even thrive in the midst of this. So our mindset really steers the way that we go in the midst of life and especially in a crisis. And so as we look to what the new normal is going to be, we need to try to figure out how we can be better in the future as a result of this hardship that we have. So let's dive into the opportunities here. First, we have opportunity in leadership. We want to acknowledge that crisis is an amplifier that creates, uh, uh, that puts a spotlight on the leader more than a spotlight already is on the leader. He, leaders are always watched more than everybody else. But now more than ever, this is amplifying either how great you are as a boss or how not great you are as a boss. Now, nobody is perfect, of course, but we are judged on how we deal with the revelation of our shortcomings and how we fortify our strengths and make more opportunities for our positive qualities and our strengths to be shown to the people around us. And so the opportunity we have here is learn about who you are as a result of this and apply that knowledge to you know, drive yourself into being a better leader in the future, grow from it, thrive later as a result from it. And the companies that learn the most about themselves and their communities and, and apply that knowledge will do better after this. That soul searching stuff, you know, the, the I didn't know I did that and the stretching emotional times. When you get to know your staff, when you get to know yourself and, and the organization better, and you act on that knowledge to either clean house uh, for yourself or your staff, like get rid of some toxic habits and just correct your own behavior, correct staff behavior, when you act on these things, you become better. But when you try to avoid them and deny them because you're just trying to hunker down and get through this, it's just going to make it worse because everybody is well aware of the problems, even more so right now. And as soon as they have the opportunity to get another job when the market is better afterwards, they're going to. And you might have even had this happen already. So um, act on this knowledge and be be humble, you know. Be vulnerable and understand that this time has acted as a purifying agent for a lot of businesses and the people in them. So another part of leadership that I think you need to lean into is the shift in perception of people. This idea that we're in this together has been a mantra ever since COVID started. 
We all tend to take each other for granted in normal life. The baristas are just there. Uh, customers are just there. And we can get used to it. But now there's this renewed sense of just, you know, we uh, a new appreciation for customers coming in and buying things. And that was so especially acute in the beginning of this. When people were coming out, it was like they were supporting small business. And there was something very emotional about that. And it makes us appreciate the people that we work with and the customers we serve all the more. Now, as time goes on and the familiarity of work starts to set in again, we run the risk of forgetting about how we thought about those people. They become the annoying customer again. They become the annoying barista again, or, you know, the boss is on my case again. It is easy to um, kind of revert back to taking each other for granted. And I would just encourage you to fight, to stay connected to those more pure things, I think, that we were discovering about our communities when it, st- when it started. Don't let the new normal become just the uh, status quo again, in other words, when it comes to relationships. Let the shift in how you perceive people shift permanently. Now, it might slip back to down a little bit after all of this, you know, um, and, and I guess some of that's normal, but we want that to be at a higher level than it was before. Figure out ways to put structure to this so we can permanently stay in the place of reminding ourselves just how interdependent we are on each other in this venture of specialty coffee retail. Uh, opportunities in business. We'll talk about the fact that um, we do have clarified values as a result of this because there's all these uh, soul-searching moments. Um, You have the opportunity also in business to reboot your systems and take a clear look at just what it looks like to do you, you know, what, what are your policies? How is the customer experience? Are you really happy with it? Do you love the way that people um, interact with your, your customers or each other? This time has been an opportunity to look at your um, systems with fresh eyes and create some momentum forward and create some distance from bad habits of the past and reboot your systems. Um, You should work on systems for quality, systems for communication, hospitality, and accountability. Those are four things that I think are really key. Uh, Again, that's quality, communication, hospitality, and accountability. Uh, Those systems cover pretty much everything that goes on in your cafe, Um, quality of your beverages and the product, how you communicate with people. Of course, communication being one of the most important, if not the most important, focus of running a good business um, between staff and bosses, staff and customers, staff and one another, staff to bosses. Just think of any way you communicate and how you can create a system that provides clear guidance for how to do that in fantastic, clear, positive, and informed ways. So hospitality, of course, you want to focus on the customer experience and map, you know, map that out and figure it out. And like, how will you want them to experience your business? And how do you hold yourself accountable? How do you hold your baristas accountable? Or how do they hold you accountable? This is maybe one of the most underrated uh, aspects of business, because we just assume that we're going, it's going to happen. But unless there's a system of accountability, it usually doesn't happen until things blow up and thing, until things get really emotional and toxic. And so we want to avoid that. You know, we've got enough to deal with right now. And the more we can create systems to act as a third party to guide the group of us who are working in the cafe to a happy end, then awesome. So reboot your systems, work on systems for quality, communication, hospitality, and accountability. Now, also opportunities in business is for diversifying income. You have probably already created your online store. Um, You're into the catering and mobile orders, curbside pickup, and all of that jazz, right? Um, And if you have not really embraced those things, you might think about doing that because the companies that are uh, part of that industry, the ones who create apps for mobile ordering, um, the ones who do online stores and things like that, they're just getting uh, more traction. And this is an aspect of the industry that's just not going to go away. You need to be able to optimize your business for these things and embrace them as the new way of doing business going forward. And the fact that you've got them 
It means that you're going to have something to fall back on. Anybody who had these things when COVID hit automatically switched themselves over to these systems that were in place. And yeah, of course they got hit. It wasn't pleasant, you know, but it wasn't as dire as some other places that completely had, had no fallback position. So online ordering, mobile catering, uh, convenience items, things that people can take uh, bottled from your store and or uh, you know instant coffee uh, companies that turn your coffee into instant coffee. Maybe you should be part of a subscription program like Trade Coffee or Roasters Marketplace or something like that. Um, there's a lot of options for you to diversify the way that you make money. Because if it's one thing that we learned from this time is we need to build in some safety measures. Okay. While it might be tedious to do and take some getting used to, pretty soon it's just going to become regular business. And the soul of who you are can pretty much come through no matter what the means of conveying coffee to people you can be creative and find a way to be who you are in that context and really represent your brand and your mission and vision. It has a challenge to do, but I think we're up for the challenge. So diversifying your income, if you're not already actively trying to uh, solidify that, there's still lots of opportunity to do it and make this a part of the way you do business going forward. So lastly, in business, the opportunity we have is to create some contingency plans for emergencies. Um, you know, Maxwell Mooney has been on the show during the COVID focus series and talked about how he had contingent, like four or five contingency plans before COVID really hit and the and shutdown started to happen. Um, that is hyper planning. And that's really cool that he did that. I want to encourage you to sit down and figure out what your emergency operations are going to look like. Go through these things as if it were your job. You know, if you hired somebody, to come in and help you write safety measures for your business. Just imagine what you would want them to create, right? And what you would really hope they give you at the end of it, and then do that yourself. <laughs> That's a good mental exercise to do. Um, play it out as if you're hiring somebody and then hire yourself to do it. Or literally hire somebody to do it. I don't care. Uh, just you have to have it in the business in order to handle these types of things gracefully. Um, on top of that, being able to have a tighter control on your money is critical. We had somebody named Andrew Carroll on the show and talked about financial resiliency. And I encourage you to listen to that episode because he had some really great things to say about savings and um, setting up your income so that you become your own insurance policy. So um, I'll link to that in the show notes. But Andrew Carroll's uh, financial resiliency episode really covers this well, but you de definitely need to figure out how you can keep tighter control of your money and have a longer runway for the future. And what are the costs that you're incurring right now, keeping a tighter control on inventory? Um, that doesn't mean making it so that baristas can't do their job or customers can't get things. That just means paying attention to, you know, is it easy for people to overorder? Are there measures you can put in place to have people not over order? Do you need to change par levels in your store? Uh, you need to make a you need to make an effort to get a better grip on the money going out of your business and be a little bit more honest about things that aren't selling, whether or not you need it, and maybe become more lean in the way that you operate your business in terms of cutting back your menu items. A lot of people have done this where they have cut their menu items down to the things that they can do. Yeah, but the ones that are not going to do very well are the ones that try to do their they try to do their whole menu because they just can't bring themselves to imagine their business without these things. But your business is more than your menu items. Your business is more about, you know, how you serve your community. So if you've got a sandwich on your menu that's expensive to stock and you think maybe just one more Facebook promotion, uh, paid promotion for this BLT, it's just not going to work out. If it hasn't worked yet, people aren't just going to magically start desiring BLTs because you hit the right algorithm. So you need to be a little bit brutal with these things. Shut some stuff down um, if you haven't already and uh, build it back up wisely in the future. You might find yourself with a permanently smaller menu, but a lot more flexibility to be agile in the future 
which I think personally think is the future of specialty coffee retail. Smaller businesses, fewer number of staff that do more things, are more empowered and trained to do more things, and a smaller menu with more opportunities to interact with the brand across a different platforms of, of service. That, to me, seems to be where the industry is going right now. So now let's talk about your staff. The opportunity that you have with the staff, first of all, is mutual empathy. We talked about how there's a lot of um, you know emotional connection that you've got to your customers as a result of this uh, crisis bringing us all together. Well, that mutual empathy is something that you can still create even if you haven't tried to cultivate it yet. It's not too late to be open and vulnerable and transparent about what's going on. You know, the people who try to shut down communication in order to, you know, save themselves or because the baristas don't need to know that, it's not their business and my business, those are the people that end up alienating their baristas. And these companies just end up with baristas that quit. And in the worst cases, baristas that quit in mass and protest the owners. Um, you This is not the time to shut down communication. Being more open and vulnerable, um, and I'm not talking about just gushing and being you know toxically vulnerable and open. I'm talking about formative vulnerability, um, things that empower people, like talking about the financial situation of the business, talking about um, your desires to pay them more, but maybe your inability to do so at the moment, and just being gut-level honest with people because you are in this together. They need the paycheck to pay their bills, and you need them to work the bar to pay your bills. You all need each other. So cultivating this mutual empathy going forward is a great opportunity because before it was just I see a lot of businesses get caught in a cycle of just baristas and bosses missing each other, okay? They they don't understand each other and they have these, you know, fables about the one and the other and how, you know, it's hard to find good help or my boss is just toxic and is a jerk. And so we dismiss each other uh, because we don't understand what it's like to be the other person. And that's what we have an opportunity to fix a little bit right now, I think. Create that mutual empathy going forward and don't forget about that and move on. Something else that I think that we need to focus on as businesses is that we, as you lose staff and you put staff on furlough, and for a lot of you, I'm so happy to see you hiring people back, um, it should really create urgency to prioritize uh, different ways to retain those baristas really optimize the barista position and make it something more valuable going forward. I mentioned having a leaner staff uh, and that does more, but what I didn't mention is the fact that if you do have that, you have to pay them more, right? No, if you have baristas that are paid $10 an hour, but you decide to hire only a few back and have them do more stuff and maybe take over some of the managerial duties, but you're only gonna still pay them $10 an hour, even when tips are lower, that's not good. And people see through that right away. That's just cheap. You have to pay them what you can, of course, and not just what you can get away with. That's where being honest comes in. But really, I feel like this is an opportunity to create more benefits for staff, to retain your staff that do come back and have a leaner team of more highly trained individuals, uh, more like a a permanent full-time staff rather than a a lot of part-time and transient staff. So the last thing I'll say here is that we have an opportunity to recreate the culture of the bar. Now, not everybody has people that they want to bring back to the bar. We talked with Dave Stahoviak about, you know, rebuilding your team. And to be honest, you know, not everybody that we had before COVID was a great fit. We have the opportunity to rebuild the staff and thus rebuild the culture one person at a time. So taking your time and hiring people and not just hiring the person that is the quickest fix for the problem is going to solve a lot of problems in the future so going forward we can't just we can't just fall back into the old habits of deciding that well you know we just got to patch this and patch that throw a band-aid over here on the schedule over there on the schedule I mean, the schedule is something that is a catalyst for some of the worst hiring decisions known to man. And uh, so don't let this happen to you in the future where you get in this cycle of just constantly being shorthanded and being forced 
to put somebody on the schedule that you you really don't want to, but you hired them in haste, this is an opportunity for you to rebuild culture and make it a more positive place. And that starts with great hiring decisions. It starts with being honest with yourself about what you're looking for. Read, uh, listen to that episode with Dave Stahoviak on hiring people and um, rebuilding your staff. It's really great. Now, with a consumer, we have opportunities because we are basically given access to their hearts and minds. Uh, we are given access to their hearts because they see the plight of the small business person. And because of that, we have the opportunity to educate them more in specialty coffee and to educate them on what we do as specialty coffee retailers. And they're, they're more likely to say, hey, that this is something that I can get into. This is something that um, I, I feel like I, I'm going to give a shot, maybe more than they would have before. Now we do this by creating accessibility and consistency in the experience. Consumers are, are seeking out accessible coffees for their budget reasons, of course, but they're also searching out luxury experiences to treat themselves because they've been eating rice and beans for a long time and you know they've just been stuck at home and, and they haven't been and they haven't had the opportunity to do as much as they wanted to. So they're going to come to your place and they want to know that there's something that is not intimidating, it's accessible, it's delicious, and it's special. What can you do to do that? Yeah? What can you do on the menu that fits that bill? Um, you can also equip them to do great coffee at home. Uh, you can equip them to do brewing at home and that will create more ardent cafe devotees, really. Um, your whole bean sales are going to increase as a result of this. Uh, I think teaching people, especially to brew coffee through videos or just equipping them for successful home brewing, creates a connection to your brand that not many other activities can do. So if you haven't spent a whole lot of time equipping your customers and educating them on home brewing uh, and getting them started down that path, you're missing opportunity for whole bean sales, and you're missing opportunity for that emotional real estate, for that connection. So we do have this social capital that we can take advantage of because we are at the focal point of this crisis. And so what are we going to do with this moment? How are we going to serve our customers well? What are we going to do to really shine and serve them where they are and, and do so with agility and humility? and accessibility. So some things to be aware of for the future to wrap this up. This crisis is a new business incubator. There are a lot of new coffee bars that are going to be springing into existence in the next six months to a year. I have several clients who are opening coffee businesses right now, and they are going to do fantastic. The market is right for new businesses to say, what the heck, why not? Let's do it. We're going to open a coffee bar, and they're going to start with agility in mind. To start a business in the middle of a crisis, you're going to take into account the crisis, right? As opposed to the others that didn't take into account a crisis and had to pivot. So while we're spending time pivoting these large companies into a new reality, it's, it's kind of like digital natives, you know, like my son is already using the phone and, you know, he's better at ma navigating some YouTube videos than I am. It's the classic story, right? These new businesses are just going to be more adept at the current way of being a business. So that means you've got to redouble your efforts on what it means to be agile just to keep up with the new people. Be aware that that's happening right now. I want to end here by saying one thing, and that is first to reiterate that mutual empathy is a catalyst to create tangible change. And second, and, and secondly, I want to say that this is going to be and has been a slow progression out of the present circumstance and into the new. It's going to be maybe years before we can say, hey, remember when? Because we're going to feel like we were kind of in it for so long just like we have felt that way right now, and it's not even been six months. So take the time to do this right. Think about what you've done so far and how you can improve on it. Think about the ways you can improve your leadership, your mindset, your business, your relationship with your staff and with your customers. And in a new reality of specialty retail, 
when you're constantly considering how you can serve those groups and how you can become better in those areas, your agility and your resiliency is a bygone conclusion. It's just a matter of disciplining ourselves to stay in touch with these deeper things that this crisis has really uncovered. So I hope that this episode was helpful for you. going to have some uh, links in the show notes to episodes I mentioned, some COVID-focused episodes and others. Um, and if you have questions or comments, feel free to email me, chris at keystotheshop.com. I want to mention real quick that we have a series of episodes coming out called Stories from the Ground. I did some COVID-focused episodes early into this crisis, and uh, we're going to start up some stories focusing on uh, how people have pivoted in shops across the country. And this is a series brought to you by Ground Control, the Ground Control Brewer from Voga Coffee. That is going to start up on Fridays. We have a, a series of three episodes to launch that with. We're going to be talking with uh, 392 Cafe in Davenport, Iowa, um, also Sump Coffee in St. Louis and Nashville. And then we'll be talking with Coffee Project New York in, of course, New York City. So stay tuned to that. I'll be making announcements on Instagram. And with that, that is the end of the show. Thank you so much for joining me today. And as always, I hope that this episode has truly given you keys to the shop.